indeed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, we're going to begin. Shabbat Shalom. We're on page 214 in the Lev Shalem with Ashrei. Ashrei Ashrei Vetech Ojelu Chasel Ashrei Shakach Alo Ashrei Shadonai Elohav Dila LeDavid Arim Chalam Elohav Ashrei Shadonai Elohav Dila LeDavid Arim Chalam Elohav Ashrei Shem <laughs> Vatisa eni ruach, va ashma harai kol rash kado, va rog varonai mim kamo, un tolat ni ruach shemi bashu. Adonai mo cholam ve cholam achut ve kaim ulam. Adonai mo cholam 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 ve Israel, <laughs> Vanita filati, the Harnay Ratson, who him of Hastacha, and any be a mer ye shecha, by even so our own, by Omer Moshe, who might never put to a Vehavianus and Miss Nehami Panacha, Kimitseante Tora, Varnami Rushala, and Baroshan Tantora, the Moshe Bektu Shato. We're bringing Parshat Mitzorah. If someone could shout out a page number in the Eitz Chaim, that would be great. Aside from Larry, is there anyone else on your side who would like an Aliyah? Okay. Great. Okay. Good. We got our three. Page 660 in the Yitzchayim Chumash. If you're, if you're following from home, it's Vayikra Leviticus chapter 14. It's verse 1. Yeah, verse 1. 
Amen. <laughs> Betsiva ha kohen velakach mitaher shte torim shte tzipori v'chayot horod be'eit eretz be'eit er be'eit erez ushni tolad bezov betsiva ha kohen v'shachat el hasipor ha'achat el kli cheres al mayim chayim. Baruch atad anai elohim melach alam asher natan lanu torat bemet. Daniel Ben Baruch and Adonai Hamvo, Baruch and I have Rachel Baruch Ata Ado, Eloheinu Melech Haof, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Had, Venatan Lanu Et Torah, Baruch Ata Adonai Notein Hator. Amen. Et had si por a chaya yi kakota vi eight vi et eight ereds vi et shni hatula vi et aizov vi taval otam vi et had si por a chaya badam had si por ashkuta al hamayim hachaim ve hiza al amitaher min atzarat sheva pamim ve ti harov ve shilach vi por a chaya al pnei asad devichi beis amitaher et begadav ve gilach et kol saro. Verachas, but mine with the hair via Hayabola Machanevia Shab, Mikutsla, oh hello, Shivat Yamin Vaya, Yomashvi, Galach, and Kosaro, and Rosho, with the Kanovet, Viet Gabotina, Viet Kosaro, Yigalech, Vehibes Begada, Verachas, Episode of Mine with the Taher. Eloheinu melech ha'ochem, asher matalanu Torah, emet v'chaye olam nata betochenu, baruch ata Adonai, noten ha'torah. Amen. Rosa Tamod. Your name? Um, Shoshana, um, but um, Velvet Ben Moshe. Tamod, Shoshana, but Velvet Ben Moshe, Aliyash, the sheet. Verse 10, uh, the last third of the page on 261. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher b'har banu mikol ha'amin b'natan lanu et Torah to Baruch atah Adonai noten ha'Torah. Amen. Could you fold here, Lady? Uvayom hashmini. 
ייקח שני כבשים תמימים וכבשה אחת בת שנתה תמימה ושלושה שונים סולם עם חבולה והשמן ולוג אחד שמן והמיר הכהן המטהר את האש המטהר את האיש המטהר ואותם לפני אדוני פתח עולם הועד ולקח הכהן את הכבש אחד והקריב אותו לישם ואת לוג השמן והניף אותם תנופה לפני אדוני ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו את תורת אמת והיה עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה אמן יעמדו המגביה והגוללת וזאת התורה אשר שם משה לבני בני ישראל על פי אדוני ביד משה. עץ חיים היא למחזיקים בעולם ותומכי המאושר. עץ חיים היא למחזיקים בעולם ותומכי המאושר. Page 221. חיים מילו מחזיקים בה, ותומכי המאושר, דרכי דרכי נעון, וכל נתיבותיה שלום. השיבנו ארנה אליך ונשוב, אחדי שמינו כקדם. יתגדל ויתקדש שמי רבה, שמא דברה חירותי, וימליך מלכותי, וחייכון וביומי חון. ובכי דחו בית ישראל, ואגלה בזמן קריב, ימרו אמן, יהי שמר במבורך. ואלם עמי עמיה, יברך וישתבח, ויפרת שמה וידנשא, ותדר ויתלה ותלש, ונגודשה ריחו. ואלם יגור ברכתה, ושירתה, דוש ברכתה, ונחמתה. דמי רן מי עמיה, וימרו אמן. The Amidah said in a quiet whisper, beginning 223.
The petition on Midah begins 223. Please remain standing through the Kedusha on 225. <laughs> Abraham <laughs> Ata Adunai Atoshimcha Lohana Elohodot Shalom Rabba Yisraelam Hatasim Leolam Kitam Elohadom Lehola Shalom Beto Beinecha Lavarechem Chaisha Bohole do Hosha Abish Lomecha Barochat Adunai Hambarechet Amo Yisrael Ba Shalom Amen. <laughs> We rise for Aleinu 231. Aleinu Lishabeh Ladon Kadisha Tom Mourner's Kaddish, page 232. 
Yitkadal v'yitkadash me'raba v'alamad yivrach yirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chayye d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman kari v'yimru amen v'yehei shemei rabba mevorach v'yalam le'almei almaya yifarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitomam v'yitnasei v'yithadar v'yitale v'yithalal shemei d'kudusha b'richu Le'ela min kol birachata v'shirata, tush b'chata v'nechamata, d'amiran be'alma v'imru amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chaim aleinu v'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom v'amav, hu y'ase shalom, aleinu v'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. Those on Zoom, we're going to give people in the room a few minutes so we'll get some sudash lishit, some dinner. We'll come back in about 10 or 12 minutes to start the teaching, so please get some food of your own, and we'll see you in a little bit. They now have more championships than the Jews. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> We spent a lot of time in the summer um, in a corner of Northeast Connecticut called Elmwood.
swimming around my throat and it keeps bypassing the vagus and it keeps like tickling me. Like, this is annoying. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have sex anymore or what's going on. I wasn't sure, yeah. My my best friend came here from Hokulua for one time and she was like, yeah, I'm hoping she's there. Like, I've never really been in New York or San Francisco. So, that was a really awesome time. Cool. Did you guys catch it or not? Yeah, it was cool. No. Okay, we'll take a few more minutes and then we'll start, so no rush. As you're getting ready, you don't need the chumash because the verses we're going to read from the chumash are on the sheet. If you want to have the chumash in front of you, you certainly can. If you want to look at other commentaries while we're there, it's going to be from the opening lines of Parshat Mitzorah. So, um, Ariel Halpenstein, who got the bar mitzvah this morning, you cannot believe the beauty and the meaning he pulled out of Parshat Tazriya. It, w- it was incredible. It was such a thoughtful, high-level, erudite. You, you could, for the first time he delivered the draft to me, I'm like, what, what Bible professor wrote this for you? It was so interestingly done. Um, and, he, and he talked about how he was... Um, choosing his Torah, re- his Parsha, during the pandemic. And he was drawn to Tazria because he, he was drawn to the notion of quarantine in an era of sickness. And he just wove something really beautiful out of it. It was really cool. Okay, everyone have a sheet? Who needs a sheet? Okay. Uh, Parsha Mitzorah, the, 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 the second half of what is often a, um, a feared double Parsha, feared in terms of what to teach from it, fear that these are actually hard parashot to read because you have a lot of verses that begin with the same words but different trup. I find it a very complex parsha to read. Um, by the time we get to Parshat Mitzora, it's really Parshat Tazria, which is about the diseased Sara'at. Parshat Tazria begins with a few verses about childbirth, the obligation to circumcise your son in eight days, and then the rules of Tzara'at. Parshat Mitzora, which is named for Tzara'at, the Mitzora is the one who has it, is really about mostly recovering from it, right? Um, the disease is, is, is over by the time we get to uh, this p- Parsha, which is going to be significant for one of the commentaries we're going to read. So I want to read together the first, these first three verses, which are the second, third, and fourth verses of the Parsha. The first verse is the standard, Vayedaber Adonai Amoshe Lemor. Okay? Um, I'm just going to read it slow, um, and uh, we'll see what comes out of the verse themselves, and look, look at some commentary. Zot tie Torah to Mitzorah. This will be the Torah of the Mitzorah. When the Torah uses the word Torah, it doesn't mean Torah. What, when the Torah uses the word Torah, what does it mean? Instruction, right? It's, the word Torah is from the verb lehorot, to instruct, like moreh, teacher, right? So when the Torah uses the word Torah, it doesn't mean the five books of Moses. It means the laws of, the instruction of. This shall be the instruction of, the laws of, the Mitzorah, the one who has Sara'at, this uh, skin disease, the Yom Taharato, on the day that he becomes, it's translated here as purified. If you've studied with me in the past, you know that I, I resent the translation of Tahor into pure and Tameh into impure because it suggests positive negative. You can't use the English words pure and impure and not have it be one good, one bad. It's not at all clear that the biblical use of Tahor and Tameh is bad, good, but they're different states of being that we're sometimes in, right? And Tameh is a state of life ebbing. You're Tameh when you're in the presence of death, corpse. Uh, you're Tameh when you're oozing from generative parts of your body, because that's a scary thing, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a scary thing. And Tahor is when you come through living waters. So it's translated as purified, but basically the day on the recovery from the Tzara'at, Vehuva el hakohen. He is brought to the Kohen. Okay. Anything jump out to anyone about that verse? On its own? Anything? Questions, comments? Okay. Next verse. Viatsaha Kohen. 
the Kohen will leave, el michutz la machane, leave the, to outside the encampment. Why is going to be, why is he, uh, why is the pretend to go outside the encampment? That, that's where he was. The Mitzvah was, was quarantined outside the camp. So it, it's an interesting contrast. Vehuva el ha Kohen, he's brought to the Kohen. You would think if the verse ended there, that, that in order to be checked out to see if he's ready to come back, he's brought to where the Kohen is. But then the next verse is the Kohen goes out. So it's hard to make sense of what the Huva is. Remember that as well, okay? Because if we are to read who, the Huva al Kohen, that's the passive voice, that he's brought to where the Kohen is, why is the Kohen leaving? Okay? A commentator we're going to read is going to pick up on that. Vera'aho Kohen, the Kohen will look, the Hine, behold, nirpa nagatsara'at min hatsarua. The um, affliction of tsara'at will have been healed. Near pa, you hear the word rofe, doctor. This is the passive of the verb heal. It looks like, or it's really a, a subjunctive. If it's the case that um, it looks that when he sees the guy, I guess, or the woman, and the plague of tsara'at has been healed from the one who had it, then verse 3, vetzibah kohen the kohen will make a commandment, right? The kohen here serves as as priest, doctor, right? Because this is thought of as a um, spiritual medical condition, and they didn't really have doctors back then anyway. So, uh, you know, that, that was a, a common thing that you went to the place of worship for both your physical healing and your spiritual healing. So he makes a diagnosis, or he, he makes a determination that the person is healed, and he makes this command, <laughs> um, that it, the, 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 the the grammar of the lakach is, and he will take, but who the subject of the, of the he will take is, is unclear. It's not necessarily the kohen, even though it seems like it is. Something like, he makes a commandment that someone take, lamitaher, to the person who is in the process of being purified, even though I hate that English word. Shteit siporim chayot torot, two live, pure birds. What does pure birds mean in this situation? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, in Parshat Shmini, kosher, right? Like pure in the sense that um, that they could be eaten, right? There, there has to be a bird that would be edible. The eight eras, some cedar wood, ushni tolaat, the scarlet of the worm, some kind of a, a red dye. The ezov, hisop, or if you like uh, the bread sold in the old city of Jerusalem, zatar, right? So zatar which is the Arab word for Ezov, which we say is Hissa, okay? The verses go on, but that's the basic thing, right? This is what happens on the day that he's to, he's to be, uh, leave the Tzara'at. The Kohen examines him. Where it happens is interesting. He sees that, ah, your affliction is over. He makes his command that he should bring two live birds, cedar wood, crimson dye, and Hissa, okay? Okay. Uh, Anything on those verses themselves? We'll look at the commentary. Okay. Look at Rashi on uh, this, uh, the, the last verse. This is source number two, and hopefully those who are on Zoom, you have the source sheet in front of you, so it's source number two. Ushni tola'at ve'ezov. On the fact that what the tsarua, the one who has tsarad brings, is this red scarlet and hisap, Rashi says something typically brief and concise, that he is um, um, summarizing or, uh, or synopsizing from a longer midrash that we're going to read below. Um, and what does it say? What is the remedy that the person in the situation should experience such that the person will be on the way to refuah, to healing? <laughs> Excuse me. Yashpil atzmo. He should lower himself Migavato from his pride, kitolaat uchezov, like a worm and like hisap. Right. So Rashi says it's a little strange that the thing that this, or maybe it's a little strange. Why? What's the specificity of the things that the person who's coming back from Tzara'at has to bring? Why uh, something that emerges from a worm, and why something that comes from a low bush ezov? And Rashi says it is a metaphor that you're not just healing from a skin rash, 
you're healing from a soul rash, you're healing from a, a personality trait that brought this upon you, and the way that you get back to your old life is through things that represent the very sinfulness that brought you there, aloneness, right? Um, or it, the opposite of the, of the sinfulness that brought you there. Rashi is making a much more concise version of several midrashim. One of them is source three. Okay, so sometimes I like reading Rashi on his own, and sometimes I like reading the source from which he brought it. Rashi, for those of you in my Rashi class, know this. Rashi knows all of Midrash and Talmud by heart. I mean, quite literally. There's, there's no Safaria, there's no hyperlink, there's no apps. And he, when he gets this verse, he just knows all of the rabbinic material, and he somehow like collapses it into one sentence. But the original was much broader. So this is Midrash Tanhuma, one of the <coughs> Um, uh, midrashic collections that um, comment on Vayikra. Okay, on the phrase Bayom Taharoto, that's the uh, opening verse that we read on the day that he becomes Tahor. Kama, with what? Kama in modern Hebrew means how much, in rabbinic Hebrew means like how so, kama, like like what? Shtei tziporim chayot tarot, two, live, pure slash kosher birds. I, I, the, the next two words should be familiar to you. Manishtana, right? The reason why it's good to hear that is that we think of Manishtana as like unique liturgy because it appears in the Haggadah. That was just the rabbi's way of saying how is X different from Y, right? And, be, and originally Manishtana appears in the Mishnah, in the Mishnah of Psachim, the 10th chapter of Psachim that deals with the, with the Haggadah, or deals with the laws of Pesach that became the Haggadah. So we think it's something unique. You look at rabbinic material and you see Manishtana all the time because the rabbi is saying, how is this different, right? Manishtana korbano, mishar korbano. How, how or why, and I think he's saying at the same time, how or why is this sacrifice different than all the sacrifice? And why the hyssop and why the two live birds and why the cedar and why the crimson? Al shesi per lashon hara. The reason why his korban is different is because the reason why he got this disease, according to rabbinic interpretation, is that he spoke Lashon Hara, with he had an evil tongue, and so uh, what happened to him is uh, what, ha what, what he caused to happen to someone else to make them feel embarrassed and on the outs. Lefichach amara katuv. Therefore, the verse said, Yehe korbano shteit siporim. So he's going to see each element of, the sac of, the, of what's in the sacrificial recipe related to the sin that he's coming from. It's two birds, shekulan molichot, whose voices um, wh whose voices go, whose voices bring. Now the Midrash is a bit um, um, vague here, so it's up for us to figure it out. What is, what is he trying to say, the author of the Midrash, about birds whose voices carry or whose voices go such that that's related to the sin that this person is recovering from. Yeah, I think so. What Bobby said, I realized that there's no microphone on the table, so let me put one microphone on the table. It seems like it's a, a bit of a metaphor for uh, when one is speaking and what, what they say may carry it beyond that domain if it's through one person or several people. And so the, the metaphor of the bird singing that it can extend and have ripple effects beyond. Yeah, I think so. And we, and we don't know for sure because he just uses two words, kolan molichot, his voice to go on. But I don't know, uh, birds chatter can be heard quite a while. I don't know, I'm thinking of, it's not the exact same thing, but anyone read the Hunger Games books, right? The Jabber Jays, right? That they can, it somehow, sometimes it feels that there are many more birds than there are. So, there are times where I, I'm a very peaceful man, I love animals, but I would like to annihilate the crows outside my window <laughs> at 5.30 in the morning because it seems like they can't be contained, right? And they're louder than they should be, and they just be going and going and going, and, and the, the spread cannot be brought back, right? So... What's that? Reverberations. Reverberations, right? So, so maybe that's what's saying here. You, in your Lashon Hara, were chattering like a bird, 
and you were thinking that it was just sweet, sweet sounds, but it was actually spreading and doing damage. Therefore, you have to bring such two birds, sorry for the birds that they get implicated in this, as, you, as part of your uh, recovery. The eight Erez, the tree of the cedar tree. Ha Erez hazeh en gavoa mimeno. We know no trees bigger than it. They had never seen a sequoia, right? So in the Middle East, right, a cedar tree, the Arze Lebanon, right? We have that reference in the Book of Psalms that there, that if God is able to smash the cedars of Lebanon, um, then that's a, suge a suggestion of tremendous power. We know no tree bigger than a cedar tree. Ulafisha higbia atzmoke erez, because the person who is speaking lashon hara made himself or herself out to be as big as a cedar tree. Look how big I am. Look how small you are. Look how powerful I am. Look how with how whimsically I could just put you down, right? Ba'alav hatzarat. That's why the tzara'at came to him. Parentheses. You have a parentheses in the middle of this where you have a davar acher, another matter, another idea. Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar said, al gasut haruach hatzara'at ba'a. It's, it's uh, that you, you don't necessarily get tzara'at for uh, lashon hara, but for being haughty. How do we know this? Shekain at motzeb uziyahu ketiv. You know this regarding the biblical character from um, earlier on and in the book of Chronicles of Uziyahu, it says, Ukechezkato gavoa libo ad lahashchit, that he was, uh, when he got strong in his, in his chozek, gaba libo, his heart got big, ad lahashchit, up until a destructive level, right? He became very holier than thou. That's in chapter 26, verse 16, and then three verses later in verse 19, uchtiv uvezapo ima kawanim, he got so arrogant with the Kohanim in his generation, bet tzara'at zachab yitro. He had blazing tzara'at coming off his forehead. End parentheses, right back to the regularly scheduled programming, but this idea that you may not only get tzara'at for loshon hara, you might get tzara'at for haughtiness. Ha'ezov, hisap, on the other hand, is the exact opposite of cedar. Ha'ezov hazeh ein ba'ilanot shafel mimeno. In, when it comes to hyssop, we know no trees or bushes that are lower than it. I don't think I've ever seen a hyssop bush in the wild, but I imagine it's a low plant. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been uh, making this uh, comparison. But you can understand, it's kind of like a, um, an herb, and herbs grow low. So your, your recipe for recovery from sara'at are the birds that represent the way you got into this, the cedar trees that suggest your frame of mind, that suggest you're bigger than everyone else. The ezov, which is lower, why? Well, the he spiel at small because you thought you were big, but you're actually lowering yourself, right? You, it, was, it came from haughtiness, but it produced the opposite of haughtiness, because anyone who'd act that way is really a low person. Lefichach mit rapeh al yedei ha'ezov. Therefore, uh, you become healed by means of the hyssop. Vishachat et hatsiporachat. So this is now back to the verse that the, the a verse that we didn't read that you um, slaughter one of the birds. Lama shochet achat umishaleach achat. I'm gonna give you a heads up that I'm not a hundred percent sure what the midrash is doing here, but I just figured I would bring the whole midrash and you can help me understand it. The Torah says that you two birds come and you slaughter one and you dispatch the other. Why do you not slaughter both the ones that you brought? Ella im asat shuva. Uh, in case you did shuva, ein hatzara'at chozer alav, then the tzara'at will not come back to you. The only thing I can think of there, I'm not, and I don't know if I'm right, is that you bring two on the, you, you really owe two birds for this. But if your shuva, if your repentance is complete, is sincere, the idea is that you slaughter one for your sacrifice and you let the other one go, as a way of saying you didn't you didn't need the full uh, double sacrifice because you've actually done repentance from what you did wrong. I may be mi missing the illusion there. If someone has a better explanation, I'm open to hearing it. Use the microphone, uh, Larry. It, is it possibly uh, connected to the concept of the scapegoat? And, and it's similar imagery. I just don't know how to map it out, right? So. In the scapegoat, right, you, one is slaughtered, um, and, and the one that's sent away is carrying the sins of the people. 
So it's similar imagery, but I'm not sure that the, that the meaning is the same. Um, and the Midrash is a little bit, again, it's vague, it's hard to know. Now, remember we said before that the phrase, Vahu el hakohen, he's brought to the Kohen, excuse me, is interesting because um, the previous verse says that the Kohen goes to him. Right, sorry, the other way around. He's brought to the Kohen, and then the next verse says that the Kohen comes to him. And so the Midrash picks up on the oddness of the Huva al HaKohen. Uh, if the Kohen uh, is coming to him, then in what way is he brought to the Kohen? Mahu vehuva el HaKohen. What does it mean, vehuva el HaKohen? What the Midrash is about to do is anti-intellectual, but totally fair game in the world of Midrash. It's taking a word that they know what it means, and they say it doesn't mean that. And we're going to make it mean something that it sounds like. Hu va, don't read it as passive, he will be brought, but hu va, he is the one who comes. Not that he is brought, but he comes. The author of this midrash knows it doesn't mean that, but it also knows that the, that the verse, the verb is strange because of this idea that the coin is the one going to him. Hu va, he is the one who has to come, lama. Because of what he did, everyone is far away and separate from him. Just like this, King David said in the book of Psalms, oh, my, my, my friends and my uh, compatriots are apart from me in my affliction. Uh, um, and uh, they, 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 they stand very far away from me. And, and also he said, that uh, he shall dwell, this is about the person of Esarat, he, he should dwell alone, and outside of the camp is his dwelling place. It's not just that he was physically outside of the encampment of the desert, but he was outside Really, the people of Israel, the encampment of Israel, the community of Israel. Therefore, it says he is brought to the Kohen, meaning almost the opposite. He's not brought. He has to come. You've got to make that journey because you were the one that caused your own excommunication. So again, we hear the syllables, and rather than hearing it as he is brought, no one's going to do this work for you. You've got to be the one to do it yourself, okay? Um, I want to br now bring in a Rashi from uh, somewhere else in the Torah before we go to source, source 5. It's really Source 5 that was the engine of this teaching. Um, the Rashi on uh, Source 4 is from Parshat Va'era. It happens to be some of the verses that we're studying right now in the Wednesday morning Rashi, Rashi class. And it has to deal with what uh, what uh, Moses says to uh, Pharaoh regarding the removal of the plague of hail. And the verse is something like, I'm going to read the whole verse to you. I should have brought the whole verse. I'm sorry. Uh, if you have a chumash in front of you, uh, you can open it up to Exodus chapter 9. Uh, you might still have it from the Torah reading, but if not, I'll read it. Okay, so Pharaoh pleads with Moses, basically saying, as he said several times, I'm done. Uh, you were right. I was wrong. Please plead on my behalf to God so that this, uh, this punishing hail will leave. In verse 29, Moses says to him, When I leave the city, I'll ex extend my hands to God. All of the thunder will stop. There will be no more hail. Laman teda, so that you should know, Pharaoh, ki ladonai haaretz, that all of this world belongs to God. Ve'atav adecha, and I want to say something to you, Pharaoh, you and your servants. Yad dati, I know, ki terem tirun, you do not yet fear. It's an interesting three-word sentence. Mipnei adonai lewechem, from God, meaning, I'm, I'm going to do what you ask. I'm going to tell God to remove the plague, and you're going to have some relief. But I'm into you. And I know that you're not sincere yet. And I know that you're not contrite. And the only reason you're pretending to be contrite right now is why? Because you want relief from the plagues. That's natural. Any human being will do almost anything 
to no longer suffer in the moment. It's why, why, why in the, you know, the philosophy about how to extract information from people who have it, why there are many people who say that torture, in addition to being immoral, is unhelpful because someone who's being tortured will say anything to have the torture being stopped, right? And it's not because they've repented. It's not because they're on your side. It's because they'll do anything to have it removed. So those three words, ki terim tirun. I know that you are not yet at the stage that you have yira, that you have uh, true awe for God. Look back at the Rashi, uh, when it says atem tirun, adayin lo tirun, you still don't have fear, fear in the sense of reverence for God. Vechein kol terem mikra. every time the word terem is used in the Torah, it means not yet. It doesn't mean, from, um, so uh, look at the fourth line of the Hebrew, terem yishkavu, this is from the story of uh, of Lot's house when uh, people are coming into the town and it meant that they hadn't yet lied down at night. Terem Yitzmach, this is second verse, second chapter of Breshit where the Torah is describing that there was no vegetation yet on the ground and that's when God brought the vegetation. It means Ad Lot Samach, it doesn't, it hadn't yet um, grown. Af Kenhu, it's similar here in this case of uh, Moses speaking to Pharaoh, Yadati ki adayin en chem I know that you still don't really have a fear of God. And once you get a little bit of respite, once the hail is gone, ta'amdu bekil kulchem. You'll go right back to what you're doing, right? <laughs> the, uh, what I'm thinking of right now is uh, the thing I had to do 17 times this morning during the kids' bar mitzvah drash and look over at the wonderful seventh grade Preston students whom I love, 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 who were chattering away the entire time and I'd give them the look of death uh, and they would stop. But as soon as I stopped giving them the look of death, they started again, right? They hadn't repented. They weren't, they weren't reformed. They just didn't want to be um, stared at by a, by a meanie rabbi, right? And by the way, we're all guilty as charged about that, right? There, there are many things that the reason why we don't do them is not necessarily because we have reached a place where we realize we shouldn't, but because we don't like the repercussions of, of doing them, right? So Aaron, Moses calls out Aaron for that. Um, sorry, Moses calls out Pharaoh for that. And how does that relate to what we've been discussing? Look at source five. One of my favorite Hasidic commentators on the Torah. His name is the Shem Mishmuel, uh, Rabbi Shmuel Bornstein. He was the second Sokachever Rebbe in Poland. And he uh, bases his commentary on the first comment we read, which is Rashi. So, so he says, Birashi. We read this in Rashi, and we already read it. Ma takna tovi What is his remedy such that he will become healed? Yashpil He should make himself low. He asks an interesting question that Rashi did not ask. Lama ramzaha Torah takanat refuato acharei shekfar nitrapeh mitzarato. Why, at least according to Rashi, does the Torah hint at the remedy for his refuah, for his healing, in the verse that is actually about the moment after he's healed, right? If you think of the exact timing of the opening lines of the Parsha, it's not, again, it's not narrative, it's law. So it's talking about a situation. The person is healed. In fact, the Kohen is going to see that he's healed, and this is the way he comes back into the community. So why do we reference, according to Rashi, uh, the process of healing if he's already healed. The Yom Tarato, on the day that he's actually recovered. It seems like we're going back in, in procedural time. Hakavanahi, this is the intent. Shahahachna Azo, this sense of submission. Hachna is to submit, to surrender. Uh, when it comes to, um, you know, your own self, and it, you, it, can, it, can, it can refer to surrender to an, uh, a foe. It can also mean to like give in to the reality of what's happening around you. This sense of recognition, <laughs> that he is very submissive right now. Why? Because he was afflicted. That's why he's submissive. That's why you got the disease, so that you become submissive. <laughs> it should stay with him forever. Afilu acharsh nitrapen, even after he heals. What he's saying is what the Torah is hinting at is we don't want it to be, which is very human nature, that you're now feeling regret for having done Lashon Hara because you have Sara'at. You waited outside the camp for a week. Sara'at's over. 
all of a sudden you're healed, do you still have regret for what you did? Is that going to change your behavior the next time? Right? So Rashi, according to him, Rashi says we link the hint at the remedy for your healing on the day that you've already healed so that after you've healed, you can remember what it was like before you had healed. It was rotten. You suffered because you made someone else suffer. Think about that the next time. Right? Is there any more common lesson that parents want to teach their children? Right? If you don't like the consequence for, that we imposed upon you for A, A, B, or C, remember that next time before you do it. And none of us learn it perfectly, but it's one of the most important teachings we can do about what it means to be a person in a family and a community. The Zo Kavanat Ma'amaramzal, this is the, the intent of what our sages said in the Talmud uh, in Manachot at page five. Zot Tihiyeh Torah Mitzorah, this will be the uh, Torah of Mitzorah. What the Talmud is plucking up on there is that the word Tihiyeh will be is not needed in Hebrew grammar. It could have been Zot Torah Mitzorah. This is the instruction of the Mitzorah. Why do we have this future of the verb to be? Bahavayata Tihiyeh. It should be, this is hard to say in English, it should be in the future what it is now, Perush, Shi'isha'er Tamid B'Shiflut Kamosh Ruachshav. That the person on the way out of the affliction should stay as humbled and as contrite and as chastened as he in, is now. We all need this lesson over and over again, right? To figure out how it is to stay the way we are the moment we learned a hard lesson. The past becomes the past pretty quickly. When we're no longer suffering from the thing that someone brought upon us, we brought upon ourselves, we can delude ourselves into thinking we can go right back into that behavior pattern again. And if we do, we're gonna have sara'at again and we're gonna be outside the camp again. And when we're brought back into the camp, we're gonna be even a chance. Are you gonna remember this time? Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't, but we know that we should. Shabbat shalom. The second burger is waiting out there. Yeah, yeah, good, good. That brings it full circle, terrific. Um, okay, so uh, we'll do Kadish Rabbana. Uh, We'll do Kadish Rabbanan and then we'll do Mari. Oh, we should bench. Yes. Um, I always forget that because I'm not the one who's eating. Did you eat bread? You want to leave Birkata Mazon? Okay. Uh, you as yom ruva goi mi dila donai la soti mele he dila donai la soti manu ainu semehim shuva donai et shiva tenu kaf pikim ba negev azorim edima beri naik soru Alok yelechu vacho no se meshek hazara bo ya bo ya bo berina no se alumotav. Rabbatanya barach. Yehi shem and I barach me atavia adolav. Yehi shem I don't know barach me atavia beer shut. Rabbatai hana barach shel chanu mi el hena shel chanu mi shelo. Baruch aloinu shel chanu mi shelo tuvo chayinu. 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 Who knows in the chemical basar ki leolam kasto uv tuvo agado tami loka sarla nube alyak sarla nu ma zon leolam va e babur shimo agado kiwel zonum farnes la ko umeti va ko umechin ma zon la kobria with a va share bara come on the tech of the zon bara katanai azan
Kadish to Rabbanan, page 38 uh, in the Lev Shalem. Kadash Shemei Rabbah, Bialma Divarach Hirutei, Bialmlich Malchutei, Bechayechon of Yomechon, Ubchaye de Chobet Yisrael, Bagala, Bizman Kari, Bimru Amen, Yehe Shemei Rabam of Arach, Leolam, Leomel Maya, Ibarach, be Ishtabach, be it Paar, be it Shaman, be it Nase, be it Hadar, be it Ale, be it Halal, Shemeda Kudisha, Brihu, Leela, Minkober, Hata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechamata, Damiran, be Alma, Bimru Amen. Al Yisrael, the Al Rabbanan, the Al Tamidehon, the Al Kol Tamidei Tamidehon, the Al Kol Mand Askin be Araita, Di be Atra Hadain, the Di Bechol Atar be Atar, Yehe Lahon Ulchon Shlama Raba, China Vachista Varachamin, the Chayin Arichin, in Zona Rebicha, who for Kanam in Kodam Avulhon di Vishmaya, Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Bechaim Tovim Alenu, Vi Alko Yisrael, Vi Amru Amen. Ose Shalom in Lamav, Uvrahama, Vi Ase Shalom, Alenu, Vi Alko Yisrael, Vi Amru Amen. We rise for the Barchu for Mariv, page 264. Behurachum Yechaper Bon Baloyashki Verbala Shiva, Pobio Hamato, Adonai Hoshia, Hamelach Yanenu, Viom Korenu. Barchu et Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Bahe. El Chayva Kayam Tamidim Lochalenu Leolam Bed Baruch Ata Adonai Amari Baravi. Vatecha, Ata Simmenoli, Olamim Barochata, Adonai, we have a mo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. I don't know. Hamadrichin 
Umalchuto Bratson Kiblu Aleha Moshe Venezuela Hanu Shira Besim Haraba, the Amru Hula, Mikam Ochavali Maronai, Mikam Ochanadar Bakodesh, Norati Lota Sefele, Malchuta Hara Uba Neha Bokeam Lifne Moshe, Ze Eli Anuvi Amru, Aronai Mlo, Leolambo, Venemar Kifa Daranai Yakov. Ugalo miyad chazak mimenu baruch ata adnai ga'al Yisrael al kibbe. Ushmor tzaytenu bo'enu l'chaim l'shalom yatav yad olam baruch ata adonai shomer amo Yisrael ya baruch adnai l'alam re'em yamim roch na'im etzion shachim shalom hal yad l'chaim. Ki amachut shalcha hi uli olmayad timloch bechavod. Ki elan melech ela ata baruch ata adonai. Melech bechvodo tamidim locha leinu leolam vaed vial kol masav. Kit gadal vit kadash shemei raba. Demadi brachu teva mifma kuteva chayachon uvi mechon uchay dechol beit Yisrael baglav izman kariv vimru amein yehei shmer abam avorach leolam emelayai barach vishabach vid parjma vid nasevi tadav tadav delash v'negudasha rifu. Lamu go bechadavish yata, did you have an echata, Damiran be alama, vimeru, amen. Quiet Amidaz begins on page 
Back to page 216, second paragraph. Back to two eighty. Aleinu <laughs> I get to a door attacker and I'm local and Bebenemar, Bayadon Nilamalakova,
Those on Zoom, we're just waiting for some matches. Ah, thank you, Juan. That's okay, thank you. Okay. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to do some frontier magic here. <laughs> Using a keep a clip, a shoe heel, and a... MacGyver. MacGyver, exactly. <laughs> I used to love that show. It's great, right? Isn't it? Uh, do you want to hit somebody that'll hit the lights? I don't even know where they are. In the Yeshua, see, he have to fellow Ephrad. He was if his Imrad, yeah, Adonai, by he li li shua, who shaft him my imbesasot, me my nea Yeshua. Ladonai Yeshua, Alamcha Birchatecha Sela, Adonai Tva Odimanu, Miskavla Nu, Elohe Yaakov Sela, Adonai Tva Od, Ashrei Adam Botea Bach, Adonai Oshia. Amalek Yanainu Vayam Koreinu La Yehudim Haita Ora Vesim Chavesasun Vayakar Kainti Elanu Kos Yeshu Otesa Uva Shem Adonai Ekra Yainanai 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 Yainanayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayananayanan
One of the charities I donate to had live Zoom coverage from there. And I looked at one of the news sites. I look at JNS, a Bedouin, I think it was a Bedouin girl was badly uh, wounded. And she was in the South, maybe near Beersheba, don't quote me, but but I was she Bedouin? Yes, yeah, I I, Bedouin. That's Bedouin. all I've seen in terms I, of injuries. But yeah. So I guess we'll turn the TV on and see. But yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm glad as, as little as it was, it could have been a lot worse. It may be, you know. Space, uh, yeah. I think it's very early in the Oh, it's 6 a.m. in Israel. Okay. Yeah, my, my son's calling Israel right He's now. Home, but if they didn't answer. Yeah. And I'm going to wait. I mean, I guess I'm going to call my cousin tomorrow morning. I think. Yeah, I emailed a bunch of people and I heard back from a first cousin who said they're fine, but I haven't heard back from anybody else. Yeah. So. <sighs> All right. Anyway, well, Lila Tov. Yeah, Lila Tov. And good. So, it was um, Shavua Tov. Emailing with you. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Bye. And the old, yeah, as I call the old fart groups on hiatus for a bit. <laughs> <laughs>